They missed key evidence. How is that even possible? This is the highest profile criminal case that we've had in this country, probably since O.J. Simpson. George Floyd's DNA in the back of the squad car, and they somehow missed that? So let's begin with the chief question here. What was the cause of death? So in order to convict Chauvin of murder, you first have to show causation, that it was his actions that led to Floyd's death. And it can't just be but for causation. Okay, there's two types of causation. There's causation in fact, and there's but for causation. But for causation means there's a chain of events leading to an outcome. But for any link in that chain, the outcome would not happen. So for example, if George Floyd doesn't get out of bed in the morning, he doesn't die that day, maybe. Right, so that is a but for causation fact. If if the person in front of him at the stoplight had sped through a yellow, maybe he's not there at that particular time and place. Is that person responsible for his death? No, because there's a difference between but for causation and then causation in fact. If there are many intervening factors in a particular case, that goes to the question of causation in fact. So the defense is arguing, I think on fairly strong terms here, that George Floyd's massive drug use contributed to his death. And that if you have to allocate where the causation lies, it lies much more with with Floyd's drug use than it lies with Chauvin using this suppression hold. Okay, this is the subject of controversy, but that's the entire point. You don't have to believe that the defense is 100% correct to acknowledge that reasonable doubt exists. Because again, the standard in criminal law is not who do I think is right, but can you prove beyond a reasonable doubt? That's a very high standard in criminal law. Beyond a reasonable doubt that Chauvin killed Floyd, not Floyd's pre-existing heart condition and massive drug use. Okay, so how extensive was Floyd's drug use? And people are saying this is slandering Floyd. It's not slandering Floyd. It goes to the heart of the case. This is one of the ways that the media bias the case. They say you're not even allowed to talk about Floyd's behavior in the lead up to the actual tape. You're not allowed to talk about Floyd's medical status. Well, if you're not allowed to talk about that stuff, then we should, we honest to God, should not have defense in this country. We should not have legal defenses in this country if you can't talk about the factors leading to the guy's death. So this is not an argument about Floyd's character because frankly, his character doesn't matter here. The only thing that matters here is the causation. That's the only thing that matters. That's why I don't find it particularly relevant what his criminal history was. He had a bad criminal history. I don't think it's very relevant to this case what his criminal history was other than police running his his name, for example, or his ID and recognizing that maybe in the past he'd had run-ins with cops. And so you have to be extremely careful with him, right? The question is always, what is the relevance of the evidence to this particular case? So the, the relevance here is that George Floyd was a serious drug addict Not only was he a serious drug addict, he's a serious drug addict who had overdosed in the recent past. Courtney Ross is Floyd's girlfriend, and she testified on the stand that just a few months ago, he actually overdosed, and then she had to bring him to the ER. He wasn't feeling good. His stomach really hurt. He was doubled over in pain. Um, Just wasn't feeling well, and he said he had to go to the hospital, so I took him straight to the hospital. You later learned that that was... uh due to an overdose? Yes. Okay, well, he'd already overdosed in the past few months. Not only did he already overdose in the past few months, as we will see, he was high at the time that he was arrested. Quite high, right? By the by, the toxicology report, very, very high. And not only that, his drug dealer was in the car with him, in all likelihood. It turns out that the man in the car with George Floyd, the day he died, refuses to testify. Now, his testimony might be relevant, you think? The reason that he's refusing to testify is because he was his drug dealer. The man's name is Maurice Hall. He's currently in jail. He appeared via Zoom at a court hearing on Tuesday morning in which his attorney argued he has no immunity from prosecution that stems from testimony about his and Floyd's behavior while seated in a Mercedes-Benz SUV shortly before the police arrived on May 25th and arrested Floyd. Hey, now, here's the weird part. Here's the weird part. Normally, it is the prosecution that can offer immunity. Not normally. It's the only way this works. The prosecution goes to somebody whose testimony they want and they offer him immunity in exchange for his testimony. The prosecution doesn't want Maurice Hall to testify. Isn't that somewhat suspicious? The man sitting next to George Floyd in the car, his drug dealer, they don't want him to testify. Okay, and the defense can't compel his testimony because he can use the fifth. Why is he claiming the fifth? Why is he saying that he might incriminate himself? Because he is afraid that he's going to be forced to testify that he gave George Floyd the drugs that killed him, and then he will be charged with third-degree manslaughter. That is what he is afraid of, or third-degree homicide because he was committing a felony. It's a, so that means it's felony murder, right? So this is a serious problem, okay? If you're the prosecution, normally, it would seem kind of relevant to, you know, question the guy in the car with Floyd. Maybe that guy says that Floyd wasn't high. Maybe that guy says that Floyd wasn't exhibiting no symptoms of, of having any sort of medical trouble, right? 
All that testimony would be relevant. The prosecution is not offering him immunity because they don't want him to testify. And the reason they don't want him to testify is because they are afraid that then the defense will question the guy and the defense will say, by the way, didn't you give this, this guy enough drugs to kill him? And then the case is exploded. So it's kind of a big deal that Maurice Hall does not want to testify. According to Nelson, Eric, Eric Nelson is the lawyer for Chauvin. He says, he says that the jury would hear from Hall he said, this will include evidence that while they were in the car, Floyd consumed what he thought were two Percocet painkiller pain pills, but they were not Percocet. Nelson said, Mr. Floyd's friends will explain that Floyd fell asleep in the car and that they couldn't wake him to get him going. And they thought the police might be coming because the store employees were coming out. Hey, but now Hall's lawyer says he won't take the witness stand. The lawyer says, Your Honor, I can't envision any topic that Mr. Hall would be called to testify on that would be both relevant to the case that would not incriminate him. Mr. Hall's testimony in these matters would specifically put him in the position of being in very close proximity to Mr. Floyd in a vehicle where drugs were found during a search by police following Floyd's death. Courtney Ross actually testified that Maurice Hall was the person selling pills to Floyd. Right here is here is Courtney Ross, Floyd's girlfriend, talking about this, saying that Floyd purchased drugs from Hall in the past. That these drugs had not been good for George Floyd, that they had exacerbated him, made him really agitated and that they continued to have those pills around from March through May. Would you agree with me that the FBI agents asked you from March to May if you continued to purchase those pills from the same source? Did they ask you that question? They yes. did. And you responded well, once in a while when we were desperate. Agreed? That's what it says, yes. Okay, not only that, they found, this is an incredible thing. Okay, the, the investigators on the scene, they went to look at the police squad car. Chauvin's lawyers went to look at the police squad car. This is six months after the incident. Okay, and what they turned out to find were half-chewed pills on the floor of the squad car that had Floyd's DNA on them. Somehow, the police investigators missed all of that. How is that even possible? This is the highest profile criminal case that we've had in this country, probably since O.J. Simpson. And, and the notion that they missed key evidence, like, you know, the half-chewed pills that had meth and also had fentanyl in them, they had traces both, in the pills, that those had George Floyd's DNA on them in the back of the squad car, and they somehow missed that? Facts don't care about your feelings, and it's a fact that The Ben Shapiro Show is the largest conservative podcast in the nation. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all of our content.